Uh, good evening everyone. Welcome back to Jazz Land Rovers in the workshop. So <clears throat> we've had a bit of a weekend off. Went to Guernsey for a wedding. Thank you Ben for the invitation. Lovely wedding, lovely couple. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I've been a bit lazy recently with these updates. So here's a good one. Uh, a bit of a video for you guys this evening. Um, this is a bit of a UK rare vehicle. It's a Discovery 3 uh, with the 4.4 litre petrol V8 engine. Um, we don't get many of these, 90% of the cars, 99% of the Discovery 3s we work on are all uh, diesel, all the 2.7 TDV6. Um, so this is a bit more, a bit of an interesting one. Um, I like to get my hands stuck into interesting, di interesting diagnostic jobs, as you know. So this one came in with the engine management light on and fuel system rich faults logged. Um, so we're going to do a quick test of basically whether the fuel system can react to uh, lean, a lean condition um, that in one go will test our O2 sensors, also known as lambda sensors. Um, it will test the PCM, whether it's able to react to what we do. Uh, we'll, see a rep we'll see what goes on, we'll see what it does. Um, it tests quite a, lot of, quite a lot of the system in one really easy, simple test. Um, and will give us something of an indication as to what's going on. Um, first of all, we're going to, a lot of people now would either get the multimeter out and look at the readings on the O2 sensors. Um, there's four of them on this car, so we're not going to do that. It's a bit, a bit time consuming. Um, or you could scope the waveform from the O2 sensors. Again, th there's four of them on the car. There's two upstream ones, which are the ones we'd be interested in right now. Um, it would take a little bit of time to set up, so we're actually going to do it all with live data, um, which isn't the perfect solution, but it will give us an indication as to whether the system is reacting as it should, behaving as it should to um, various inputs that we do, and will, might give us an idea of what we're looking at. So we've got Autologic here in the engine bay. Uh, it just helps us. Um, it's got a nice long cable, so we can have it all the way out here, uh, have the results on screen as we mess around with the car. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to press a few buttons on here. So here we are. We're in. We're in. We're in the vehicle already. We're in engine control, uh, powertrain control module. I'm just just going to press fuel trim. Uh, engine's not running, so everything's at zero pretty much. I'm just going to go on those four. Uh, graph those four for everyone. So at the top here, we've got short-term fuel trims, and at the bottom, long-term fuel trims. Again, engines off. They're all at approximately zero um, very quickly what though what these will do is the short-term fuel trims are used by the powertrain control module to, to essentially run the engine and um, if it detects uh, not enough or sorry too much air or, or rather if it detects a lean condition uh, it will increase the fuel trim uh, if it detects a rich condition it will decrease those short-term fuel trims and um, the long-term fuel trims those, those essentially are what log the fault codes. If they go too high for too long, that's where we'll get our too rich, uh, system too rich fault codes from. Um, essentially, then, so the top two are used by the PCM to run the engine. Um, if it detects a lean condition, it'll put more fuel in, it will increase the fuel trim. If it detects a rich condition, it will decrease the fuel, it will decrease the fuel trim. So that they're in percentages, it could be positive, it could be negative, either way. Um, the job of the long-term fuel trims is to bring our short-term fuel trim back to zero all the time, um, or rather periodically. So if our short-term fuel trim increase, both increases up to like 20%, for example, after a minute or so, the long-term fuel trim will start increasing. Uh, and the short term will start decreasing back down to zero. That's to keep our short term fuel trim at zero in the middle of its range where it can react. So if it can potentially go plus or minus 40%, for example, and the engine always, or the powertrain control module always wants, wants to keep that in the middle of that range. So it's got maximum reactive capability, if you like. Um, so if it, re if it suddenly had to increase fuel trim, it could increase it from zero all the way up to 40. Uh, if it was already hovering around 30 um, and it had to increase it massively all of a sudden, it wouldn't be able to do that. It would just go up to 40%, cut out, and then our engine would, would either cut out or would log faults and go into limp mode or whatever. So the job of the long-term fuel trim is to periodically uh, react to whatever the short-term fuel trim has done and bring that short-term fuel trim back to zero. There's a lot of syllables in there, I apologise. So 
I'm going to turn this car on. It's going to walk around here. So there we are, started up. And we just have a watch of our screen. So initially nothing goes on. Nothing at all. I'm just going to refresh this page. Because nothing at all is not what we want to happen. Children, bam, 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 bam. So there you go. Short term fuel trim has gone up quite a lot. This should be at zero, remember. So bank one fuel trim has gone to 16. Short term fuel trim on two has went up to about eight. And now it's coming down because our long term fuel trims are reacting. You can see bank one fuel trim, long term is going up and up and up, which is allowing our short term fuel trim to come back to zero. Uh, same on the long term fuel trim for bank two. That's now increased up to around about, well, about five and a half, six percent. And short term fuel trim on two has come down to zero. So that's exactly what the system's meant to do. That proves that our system is, is able to react to inputs, inputs from the various sensors. And um, we're just gonna actually test that even further. So both these stops are now at about zero. Zero in, in respect to this will be around about anywhere between plus or minus five percent. And if we're there at well, 0.8, 2.3, 0.8, approximately, you know, that kind of figure. If you check that out, something's happened on bank two there. That's an interesting one. On both banks, now they're just reacting and going back up to zero. Um, what we're going to do, I'm going to pull this off, which is going to let a lot of air in, into the engine, which is a lean condition. So if we're making it go lean, we should see our short-term fuel trims increase. And that proves that our system is able to react. So. A lot of air going in there. And there you go, short term fuel trim all the way up to 40%. Again, that proves our engine is able to react. If I put this back on, it immediately starts to decrease. And so that's exactly what we want to see. That proves that from the top, really, our airflow meter is able to read the amount of air going in. Um, all our fuel injectors are able to react to put more fuel in, put less fuel in, uh, and it proves that our O2 sensors uh, detect that lean condition or that rich condition, uh, feed that information to the PCM, the PCM then decreases or increases the amount of fuel the injectors are putting in, and, and it is basically able to control the running of the engine, so that proves that our system is operating perfectly, or perfectly well, in the closed loop uh, circumstance like this at idle. Um, so that leads us to believe that or leads us to say we can believe what this is telling us so if we look at this again long term fuel trim 12 and a half percent and five and a half percent so remember we want zeros everywhere and um, so what this is telling us right now is that long term our engine is running lean particularly on bank one slightly on bank two and um, it's running lean because or rather, sorry, it's detecting a lean condition, continually detecting a lean condition. Um, if the engine's running properly and all the sensors are working, then it will never actually run rich or lean. Um, it will only compensate for those, it will compensate for those conditions, bring it back to zero. Uh, but what we've got here is, we're continually putting in more fuel on bank one, or 10% more fuel, and we are continually putting in 5% more fuel on bank two. And um, that's how we get our fuel system rich font code. It's not because um, there's a fault and it's putting in more fuel and that's the fault. It's the, the reason is we've got some kind of air leak into the engine, an unmetered air leak into the engine uh, and the fuel system is compensating for that by putting in more fuel uh, and that's where we get our rich fault code from. Uh, the richness referring to how much fuel it's having to put in to run the engine properly, more fuel than normal. Um, what I'm going to do now is, so what, just to recap, we think we've got a, uh, an air leak into this engine uh, and now we're going to try and find it. We're going to do that by turning off our engine, which is now really hot. Uh, and we're going to use our smoke tester because we like our smoke tester. It tells us lots of things about leaks. Um, we commonly use this trying to find boost leaks on 
well on the 2.7 V6s for example, or 2.7 diesel V6s, excuse me a second, I'm back in the room. So, smoke tester. As I was saying, this we use this to detect boost leaks. It can also detect vacuum leaks, which is what we have here. So here we are, I've put our, this is where our smoke comes out of. I've put our little cone into here, into our intake. Now we're gonna pressurize our entire intake and see if we've got any leaks. So I'm gonna turn on a smoke tester. If I turn that little valve, we can see we start getting smoke out of here. So I'm just going to close that again. Put our hose in there. I'm actually going to turn this LED light off and I'll show you why later. Um, but pick up a different light. So, turn the smoke on. Uh, and I'm going to use this yellow light, because this yellow light here actually shows up the smoke a lot better. Um, so we've got the smoke going in there. And we're looking for a leak, any smoke around the engine. Uh, and I can see some there. This, this little valve is the EGR valve, or exhaust gas recirculation valve on this engine. Uh, and I was using the yellow light actually because you can see the smoke a lot easier with it. With the LED light actually there's quite a lot of smoke so you can see it. But the the smoke's white, the light's white, it's hard to see whereas with white smoke and yellow light you can see it a lot, a lot easier. Um, so there, that's one reason why we could have... If you can see it. One reason why we could have a, an intake leak on this engine. That EGR valve is allowing smoke out, therefore it would allow air in to the intake. Um, we're going to fix that first of all. Uh, it's a fault, we need to fix it, and then we'll see how this engine goes. Um, that is a, a really, really rough guide as to how um, modern-ish, and this is 2005, so it's not that modern, um, Modernish compared to some Land Rover engines, let's put it that way. How some modernish fuel systems work, uh, petrol fuel systems work. Um, we're not looking at Lambda, we're not looking at O2, we're looking at the system as a whole and seeing if, we, if it reacts to changes. Uh, if it does, uh, we can believe what it's telling us. This one thought that there was, this one said it was putting in too much fuel uh, at, compared to a normal engine. Uh, if it's putting in too much fuel but it's still running, it must be matching that amount of fuel to the appropriate amount of air. So um, there was more more air getting in than standard as well. So that's what we we're looking at. And, which you can't see because I'm talking crap. That's what we're looking at, is our EGR valve leaking, allowing air in. Okay guys, it's just Land Rovers again. Um, quite a nice little test really there. So I'll catch you another time, thank you.